Hello, my peeps. It is Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. It is uh, Thursdays, this and that, um, and this tonight is the baby wipe technique. So any baby wipe will do. I have that out there, so I remember to say, uh, based on the testimonial of numerous demonstrators, it appears the Costco ones, the Kirkland brand, um, are the best ones to use because they're fairly lint free. But for what I'm doing here, I don't really notice the difference. I do notice it if you're using them to wipe stamps or wipe anything else, but uh, I am not endorsing any one particular one. I am simply saying, grab some baby wipes. Now what started this whole, hey, I'm going to show you how to do this technique, is this card, which came in the paper pumpkin. What month are we in? March. The March paper pumpkin beyond the horizon. And you see this background is sort of different colors and various things. Now you could take a stamp if you had a stamp this big. Um, the one that actually came in the paper pumpkin kit is this big. So it's obviously not this one. This was actually this would have been based on this and then probably photo enlarged, but you can take you could take the stamp and you could with a marker, not a blends, a blends will not work for this process, but with a marker, you could go and individually color like every now and again, hit a tick, hit a tick, and color this entire stamp. <laughs> and dook. Now Who's got that kind of time? So I'm going to show you how you can get, it's not going to look exactly the same, but you'll get this effect using a baby wipe. And I probably should have said ahead of time, reinkers. You don't just need baby wipes. That all you would do would have would be a clean stamp. So here is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to find a piece of paper. Okay. So I have these old clam shells. I think is what we called them back in the day. Um, and I have my baby, you can't really see, but it is in there. There's a baby wipe in the bottom of it. And it is simply a wet baby wipe folded in half. Now I'm using this just cause I like to uh, contain the mess. I ha I've saved some of these from before because it will also, um, work for various other techniques where you really need to contain the mess. I do think though that the same thing would work if you would just put your baby wipe over top of this, um, silicone mat. <laughs> Why did I all of a sudden forget that what that's called? I'm not sure. So we'll try that on one of the other ones. But this is what we're going to do. So this is how simple it is. This card, I looked on the back of the card. So I do know that these colors are Misty Moonlight, Old Olive, and Crushed Curry. Which is why we're using Misty Moonlight, Granny Apple Green, and I'm pretty sure this one was a Daffodil. Daffodil Delight. Why? Because you don't have to copy exactly, and because these are the colors I wanted to use. But it will, they're pretty close, and it'll give you the same kind of effect. Uh, these ones are just a little more vibrant, and that's what I was going for. So here's what we're going to do. And I don't actually know. This is an old technique, so if anybody wants to chime in and, and, and tell me extra things about it, by all means, put it in the comments. We can all learn more. Um, I don't know if it matters if you start light and go dark, or start dark and go light. Um, so... I'm going to do one starting with the dark and I'm going to do one starting with the light. And we're going to see if it makes a difference. Now, because the stamps that I'm using is like I said, this big, I'm going to do double duty and I'm only going to, I'm only going to put ink on part of this because then I can use the other half to clean. You will see how important cleaning is. If I had a bigger stamp, which we're going to use in one of the other examples, um, that is like almost as big as this baby wipe, then obviously you need to spread your dots out. But because I know how small I'm making this, I, I just need it there. Now I want to stamp it more than once. You could do this whole process just to stamp one stamp. I'm going to stamp it more than once. And what I would recommend, because every time you do this, you are not going to get the exact thing. It is never going to be identical. I'd be actually, I guess you could, but I'd be really impressed if you could make it identical. So if you're going to do this, even if you just need one card, I would say prep a bunch of extra pieces of cardstock and make the most of it. Have your envelopes nearby so you can stamp on the envelope. If you need to put inserts in your cards, um, like if your card is dark color soft, or even if you just want to, you know, stamp a couple extra things, do it while you have the ink out because you're going to have a lot of ink in here and then it, you know, it's not like you're going to be able to save it. So here's what we're going to do. And I don't want this to be super dark. Um, and you can always touch it up. And really there is no right or wrong. So I'm just going to drop some ink. And as you notice, it does bleed profusely. Um, do not call 911. This is what we want. It gives us our effect. Um, it may look like I'm like being precise. I'm not. I just find for whatever reason, 
this bottle is really tough to squeeze. And so I'm, and I'm trying, I'm trying to get a drop at a time. I really don't want, um, to like squirt an entire pile of ink in there. It's not gonna, it's not gonna help us any. So I'm just trying to get one drop at a time. So that was the Misty Moonlight. This is Granny Apple Green. See, this bottle's not as stiff, so it's working a little easier for me. And you want to leave some spaces, right? I need one. I need spaces because I still have a third color, but also, um, I don't want all the colors to blend together and get too muddy because then if they do, then it's it's going to distort the color on my card, right? So that's not what I was going for. It's not the end of the world. This I will show you what not to do and why, and even the what not to do and why. Honestly, I still think looks pretty good. So maybe there is no wrong way to do this. Honestly, with crafting, there's so much that is just personal preference that does it really matter? Uh, let's see, what color do I have there? I have too much blue, so I think I'm gonna put a little, I have a little bit too big of a white spot there in the middle, so I was, I was honestly trying to drop half a drop, but that doesn't work. Okay, so there's my three colors. I originally had two other darker colors ready to go as well. Um, but when I did a, a very small test sample, um, I realized that this was plenty dark and I didn't need any darker. These are different colors. We are going to do a sample where there I'm using all like tones of the same. Now, I think with the exception of one stamp, everything I'm using today is photopolymer. So as you know, this is one of the other stamps we're using. So on a clear stamp, you see how it's got the foam, right? Photopolymer does not. So it is always best you will get a better image stamping over top of a piece of foam. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to take a piece of cardstock. And here's what's important. When you have a stamp pad and you're used to stamping like this, you go like this, right? You want to ink up your stamp. Oops, <laughs> it's very sticky when there's no ink on it. You want to ink up your stamp, so you go like this, right? And you stamp all over your stamp pad. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll show you why at the end, but first I want to make the stuff that I want. So remember, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, now I now I moved my stuff and I can't put my stamp pad back down. There we go. Okay, so if you do that, all you're going to do is mix everything and muddy everything, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to just go down into my... I basically just made a makeshift ink pad, right? We're going to go straight down into it. Mine is a little um, sticky to there. And then we're going to go straight down onto here. Now, I like the look of this. <laughs> It gives you kind of the mottled look and it will it will dry a little bit and it'll be a little bit lighter when it dries as well. So you see it's not exactly the same, but it gives you the idea. So I'm gonna go. So now when I go do this again, if I take my same stamp and I just stick it right back in, whether I stick it in the same area, which again, uh, kudos to you if you could exactly line that back up again. Um, if you did it somehow that you were using like the corner of something, so every time you hit, you hit the same place, great, but even eventually your ink wouldn't be dark enough. So in between stamps, you're going to want to wipe this off because if not, all you're going to do like it, and it's not bad if you had a whole bunch of dark colors, it probably wouldn't be as bad, but anywhere your yellow is, if you had yellow on your stamp and now all of a sudden you put it in the blue, you're not going to get yellow anymore, right? The lighter colors are certainly going to be the ones that are most affected. So now I'm just going to go somewhere else and I'm going to pick up some ink and I'm going to stamp down there. Well, I do like the way this looks. Um... And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pick up some ink. And I'm going to, I'm not, you know, I sometimes have a plan, sometimes I don't. In this case, I never really did. I actually just decided I didn't want to go in a straight line. I'm going to go over here. And like I said, I'm washing in between. Oh, I almost, oh, maybe I did. I, I one of the things I'm, I'm rather particular about a lot of things, but I might, and I might end up trimming this down, is I like when I have equidistance around things. And I almost got it side to side, but I definitely did not get it top to bottom. So this piece may end up being trimmed out, but I will use this background piece for something. So there's one. Um, I'm going to actually do it on a, I was going to do it on a note card originally. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually, you know what, I'm actually going to do the note card the, the way you're not supposed to do it. So here's what happens if you don't wash your stamp in between. Okay, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to take some ink. I'm going to pick it up. And this time I'm going to attempt to go in a straight line. And I'm going to put it down on my note card, right? Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick up some more ink. And I'm going to put it in a straight line on my note card. Then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pick up some ink. Now, oops. <laughs> I don't know if you can notice. My thing keeps holding up. 
but you can see that I'm starting to get patterns in my ink. It's not showing up very well on camera, but, oh, that was a little better. You see in the yellow there, you see how there's now green in the yellow? It's starting to go, and it's just going to start getting muddier as it goes. Now, in this case, it's not bad. I mean, so far it's good. It's just a little more kind of modely. But if I if I do this and I start, the more I mix it, as you can see, the more I mix it, the more I'm mixing those colors together. Here, I'll do it on here so you can compare right next to the first one. Yeah, we'll just stamp on our ink pad. It's starting to get muddier. So you see how this is very yellow, green, and blue? And this is yellowish green and bluish green, and it's starting. So the more times I do that, the more times it's going to mush together. And I'm just going to start to lose the definition that I originally had. I need one more piece here. I'll see if I can get... There we go. So yeah, you can even see it on there because I happened to hit a yellow piece. It's, it's not clean, clear yellow. It's now yellow with green in it. So, like I said, it is not the end of the world, but depending what you're doing, it will, it will start to get more modeled. When I did this earlier, and it all depends on the ink color, so I did it to test it earlier, and I thought, um, can I, I'll, I'll show you what it's going to do. This is actually how it came out earlier, and I was, I was actually showing this, I was trying to stamp off. So I was doing it on there, and then I was stamping off beside, and I was doing it on here, and I was stamping off beside, because I was trying to see the difference in color. But look how quickly that all got mushed. And it's it's very just kind of green and blue. And every now and again, you get a hint of yellow. Because I have done this to my to my stamp pad. It's, it's sort of the equivalent of, you know, taking your black, you know, stamping something in black and then sticking that, that same stamp into your yellow ink pad before you clean it. It's eventually just going to, it'll give you a cool tone, but it's eventually just going to mess things up. But I did get a cool outlook. And like I said, it's not exactly the same, but to me, it looks close enough. If this is what appealed to you, then look at how cool this is. Now, obviously, I, my favorite, one of my absolute favorite colors that Stampin' Up! has is Granny Apple Green. So this is a little bit heavier on the green side, which I like. It is a bit of trial and error. Um, if you would much rather have um, it heavier on the yellow side or the blue side, then it's simply just a matter of how you put your glue, or your glue, your uh, ink dots down. Now remember before, I told you I, every time I make something, I make lunchbox cards. So this is what I made the, the other day when I was putting these cards together. This is just simply stamped, right? But this is just a nice little lunchbox card. So because I have this out and because I have ink left, I this was part of when I was doing my test run earlier, um, I, I have these little bits and pieces. So I'm always going to stamp on here with whatever I'm doing because I don't want to waste this. Now you will notice that I, because I was stamping and I was kind of overlapping, sometimes you get a little bit, it's not exactly perfect. This is no different than anything else. That's just where you decide to put your sentiment. <laughs> you just cover up the messes. So it will work. So here's the beauty of it. I'm going to wipe this stamp off because we're done with this one now. Uh, here's the beauty of it. When you're done, you just kind of use your baby wipe, which is built in cleaner right there. Wipe up what you're doing. Turf that. Boom, ink pads are done. <laughs> and we're on to the next color. So, here's what we're going to try this time. And like I said, I'm just taking an ink pad. Actually, I think in that case, I'm taking two ink, or two ink pads, two baby whips. In this case, I think I have two. Um, you want them wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one in here. I'm going to use that. We'll use that one for the last one. And I'm just putting the lid on so it doesn't dry out. It, it probably won't. I'm, we're not going to be here all day. But I did say that I was going to try it on here. Now I've never tried it on here before, but I can't see why it wouldn't work. So we're going to try it on here. And hey, what's more fun than testing things live? <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to save what I'm hoping will give me like the biggest wow factor till later because when I'm done, I'm going to stamp as much as I possibly can with the com color combination because it's totally my color combination. So here's one of the other things we're going to try. Uh, and, and looking at it now, do I, I mean, I might only go three. So what I did was I picked four pinks. And I'm thinking I'm actually just going to go with three pinks. I'm just going to pick which one I want to get rid of. Maybe I want to go that way. I'm going to go with three pinks instead. So here's what I'm going to do. And I'm using, this time I'm using, this is the biggest stamp that I'm going to use. 
So I need, I'm using a fair bit of this. And I don't want to, I don't want to always go just in one spot. So I'm going to, I'm going to get most of this covered in ink. And this time, we're going to see if it makes a difference. I'm going to start with the light dots. Which is funny because they don't look very light in here, but they are the lighter dots. And it's random. And this again, nice soft, soft ink bottle. I don't know why some of them were. That first one wasn't even the newest one I have, so I'm not sure. It was just stiff. And again, this is, there's nothing scientific here. This is trial and error. Um, you can always stamp on a, I, I close the lid every time. Like, I'm not going to go back. You could go back and after you've done the first one, just go back and add some more ink dots. And uh, I'm just going to, excuse me here while I drink tea while I drop dots. I don't, like I said, I don't think you want to get them like totally overlapping, but you can't control. Oh, there, I got two side by side. Let's see what happens with that. Um, you can't, can, you can't control how much it bleeds. I mean, the amount of ink is going to spread. Um, I'm, I was going to be all fancy and try to remember that word, but all of a sudden I can't remember what that word is. Where things go from a dry area to a wet area. Osmosis? I think that's the word. Um, oh, and there's me here. There's my tea. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a risky crafter because it's right beside me. And if you've watched previous videos of mine, um, you will have noticed that the, the tea bag is hanging out of the side of the cup. And I have caught that on my finger and flipped the tea bag onto the table too. So do I live and learn? Nope. I just find that I've been doing a lot of talking lately and on videos, I don't know if it's, this is my theory because, you know, I'm not a scientist, um, <laughs> is because we're doing so much of like Zoom and phone and we're doing different things and talking in person, I think we feel the need to project more. And so I think we're, it's actually harder on our voice because I do feel like kind of voice strained sometimes. So hence the tea. Mm. It's funny because these, these colors don't always look like themselves. That was a rather large gap in the middle. So I'm just kind of filling in with random colors. Um, we said it's not the end of the world if there's bits of white. Um, you just don't want necessarily want too much white because in my experience, Mr. Murphy of Murphy Law fame um, will make it that a critical part of your stamp will be where the white hits. So that's what we're trying to avoid. I hope it really doesn't matter which lid goes on which because I totally have no idea. Okay, so now I've made a bunch of pink. And I just need to get the lids all back on. Um, as much as I like to live on the edge, I do know that I'm the person who will knock things over. So, oh, piece of paper. Piece of paper would be a good idea. There we go. So I totally did not do what I said I was going to do in the last one. Um, I have these stacked so I don't forget, and yet somehow I still did forget. So here's what I have. I'm going to make a pink flower on this piece. I also have out the card base, because I like to stamp on the inside, and the envelope, because I like to stamp on the envelope. We need to do all of these at once, <laughs> because like I said, we're not going to recreate this. And I did not do that with the other one. And I even have one of my tiny little dudes, because I'm going to make it on my card and I will stamp one on this like this is just a layer and this is the actual card I will stamp on both of these because I might decide to layer it I might decide to put this on another color it just gives me options okay so what we're going to do first and I'm going to show you the difference between a solid stamp <clears throat> excuse me and a line stamp so I think I have enough ink on there this is um oh what's the word it's a, it's like a textured stamp so it's designed, it's cool. I think it looks cool. Um, the petal pink, I always use petal pink and then I always think, mm. but petal pink has a bit of a, to me, a bit of a beigey tone to it. But I do like this. These are these are maybe not the three colors that should have gone together, but I do kind of like how that turned out. So yeah, I don't I don't know if the camera's fully picking it up. It, it is textured, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a flat, smooth color, but I do like it. Um, Okay, so because this is the full size of it, I can't wipe my stamp on the side of it. So I'm just going to grab another baby wipe at the, at the moment. 
So I am, like I said, I'm going to wipe in between because if not, I'm just going to, I'm going to mess up my stamp. I'm going to mess up my makeshift ink pad here and I'll just muddy up my card. And in this case where I have light pink colors, um, the darker ones will definitely muddy up and make a mess, which I don't want. Okay, I'm just trying to fill most of this card base. Oh, there we go. Um, I never planned it out ahead of time or anything like that. Don't be silly. Oh, it does look cool. Um, I'll, I'll hold it up in a minute. Okay, so that's the more solid one. And then I'm going to use it on the inside, just so we can see the difference. This is the outline stamp that goes with it. So, in theory, I could outline over top of it, but outlining marbled over top of marble doesn't seem to me like the best way to go. I have an idea for how I want that to work. We'll see if it does. So, my point though in showing you these two different things is, one is a solid stamp and one is just an outline stamp, but they both work with this, right? Like it's just a matter of how much ink you see, but either one of these will work. The same is for a sentiment. If it is, if it is, uh, something all over my envelope there. If it's a really fine sentiment, it's not going to work as well. But if it is a thicker sentiment, like we'll use this one. Hopefully I've left enough room for the uh, second half of that greeting. You see how this is this is a thicker line sentiment? Uh, so that one works. And then this this one is a little bit thinner, but it's not like uh, you can't really see it on the it's not super super thin so we're going to uh we're going to try that one too and just see if it works now i'm doing this i wasn't going to do this this way but i decided afterwards yeah see it's it's tone on tone and i did somehow lose a little bit of in the middle but for the intent what i'm trying to show you is this one is thick enough to do it a small really thin really fine one you might not see enough color and you might hit a gap as i said Sometimes things work out perfectly. Um, you might hit a gap in the ink and it happens to be right where you really want it to be. And now we have no letter there. So um, if, you, if you knew you were stamping all sentiments, I would make sure there was no white space at all. Because I was doing the flowers, I knew it would be okay. But just so you know. So my other thought though, was what we could do with this is stamp this as the background. And then I was about to just stick that in there, but given that it's it's the darkest of the colors, so it probably would have been fine, but but to promote proper stamping etiquette, I will not do that. So this is the line stamp that goes over top. And see this one, I can do this too. Uh, and then I'm going to stick my head, hopefully not in the camera. I'm gonna to attempt to line this up and just stamp over top of it. So there we go. So now I have the cool modeled background and I've just stamped the line over top of it. And quite frankly, I love how that turned out. So let's line up the other flower. And these ones don't, in case you're using this, this is the, um, these flowers. Uh, I actually saw that this had a name. So this was the bonus stamp set that came with the paper pumpkin. And it was, it's either called Celebrate Times or Celebrate This or something. And these are the flowers that were in there. And they are lovely. And what I should have done if I'd been thinking is I could have done the green leaves using the colors we'd used earlier. But I did not think of that. Okay, so there we go. So there is big flowers and big outlines, and that's going to become a card later. Um, and because I want to, like I said, I've already stamped the envelope. Give it a little just a little jish on the outside. I'm just going to keep piling these things off to the side, and hopefully I'll be able to find them all later. Um... I think for the inside, I think I am just going to go with, uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to, I, I, because this is a bigger flower. Sorry, that's me thinking out loud. Um, because this is a bigger flower, <clears throat> it's going to cover more of the inside. And I do want to leave pe people room to write. But at the same time, when I do this, it's going to actually come through not super dark. So I think people could just write over it if they needed to. Let's move that up. So yeah, I think if you need to, you just write over top of it. So there we go. So I've now stamped the, and, you, and you'll notice, I, like I said, I'm watching every time in between. So like I said, I have no idea what's going to end up with those cards, what they're going to look like. 
I will post those probably tomorrow, uh, what the final results were. But what do I have here? Hmm. Odd envelope. So I have another layer. And because I have lots of ink left, I think I'm going to do this one again. I think I'm just going to do... Oh, see, I made a mistake. Well, let's see how it works here. It is it is a habit, and it's a really hard habit to break, to go like this, to especially on a big stamp, and ink it up as much as you can. Oops. <laughs> or to drop your block. Believe me, the number of times I did it, I have dropped my block on my project. It's because I'm holding my baby wipe in my hand so I can wipe them. Um, so this one's not too bad. It's not too modeled yet. Um, and when I dropped the block, I did not actually stay in the rest of my sheet. So I like this. This this is, like I said, who knows what this is going to end up being. Um, but I have, because I have this ink here, and honestly, it's because I have the ink here and because I have the time <laughs> right now to do this, because um, otherwise, yes, I would just be turfing this. And you know what I think I might do with our final one, uh, just as an experiment for you fine folks, is I am going to make the stuff on it like I said, it's so funny I'm, I'm making this super precision even though i have no idea what i'm going to use this for i just thought i'm going to stamp in either corner because i think this might end up with a sentiment and maybe some ah who knows but like i said it's starting to get a little modeled or a little modeled a little faded in spots i think i don't have enough ink in some spots um but because it is a modeled look it's getting i'm getting away with it but anyway so i made an extra one for there um Anyways, I'm going to keep with the, the last color I do, because it's the one that's in the case. And that case is not, like, super airtight. But I'm going to try a couple things I never thought to do before today. I'm going to just put the lid on it. And I'm going to wait a day or two, maybe on the weekend when I have some more time to play. I'm going to... Um, open it up and just see if it's wet enough to stamp with and see if it works like if you could actually keep this for future um, and then the other thing I've just decided I'm going to try is I'm going to try that and then whether or not that works I'm also going to try can I just spritz it with water or maybe spritz it with alcohol or maybe I'll try half and half <laughs> and see what happens if you do that can you like revive it we are very scientific here at the Paper Pusher TV show. Um, so we're going to try all sorts of things. Now, the other thing I also wanted to show you was these are much smaller flowers. Like the other ones were very big. Look how tiny these little ones are. And I will tell you, and I'll give it a plug, just because I don't think it's gotten enough love. This is from the Wildfire Path set. I absolutely love it. Mostly I love it because I love this quote. I love the font, but you can make so many different flowers and stuff with this. Um, if you saw my little, my little, I've given them all out, but my little lunchbox cards that had the thistle, I'm not sure what this flower is supposed to be. I, th I think it's like a corn flower or something. I saw a thistle. So that's what it came from. But I love this staff set and there's so many things you can do with it. So that's where these little dudes came from. But yeah, they are much smaller flowers, but you still get the same... Oops, that wasn't a very good ink up. Either that or it's because I stamped it and then started talking. But because I, I couldn't just put it right back in again because Lord knows I have the foggiest idea where I stamped it the first time. But as I said earlier, that just means the sentiment will have to go there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because if, if I stamp it the right way, it works. Like if I put it down and get a good soak up and then put it like stamp it right away, it works great. I actually quite like a smattering of flowers. It doesn't even make sense. But that's what I'm going to leave that at because I like the way that looks. So somebody will end up with that. And then wipe, wipe, wipe. <laughs> wipe, wipe, wipe. Wipe your stamp off. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Wipe your stamp off. I don't know what song I'm thinking that is. But uh, this one's just going to get a little bit in the corner. Because I like that. Again, I have no plan going into these things. I just start. That's what I, I just wing it. Um, yeah, let's start. Let's quit going in the exact same spot because then I'm likely to have more ink when I go there. This is an envelope for a note card. We're just going to stamp that. And this is the note card. Um, why? Because. Because I have ink left and because I'm about to squish this up. And... 
I don't want to waste any leftover ink. I mean, at a certain point, you are there's it's not going to have enough ink left. You're gonna there's not going to be a point to saving it. But right now, I am. Oops. Okay, I don't know if you noticed that, but I stamped the ink and then immediately wiped it off. <laughs> I'm in the I'm so in the mode now for cleaning my stamp that I cleaned it before I even stamped it. Ooh, I might knock out on this one too. And actually get five of them in a row and they'll the spacing will work. Ta-da! Again, no idea what I'm doing with the card, but it's a pretty effect. Okay, I have quite the pile of stuff that I'm throwing off to the side there. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple other pink things um, before I ditch this. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn this around. So I have to, this is the problem. I keep holding that in my hand because I don't want to set something wet on my desk because it's, my desk is wooden paper, right? Wood covered in paper. But I really need to put that down. Okay, so here's another thing you can do. These are pre-cut. But if you can imagine, you could do this either way. You could either pre-cut them and stamp them. It's probably driving people nuts that I'm not putting any kind of a mat or anything here. Okay, so my foam mat is now going underneath my piece of paper. So the foam mat is still there. You just can't see it anymore. It's magic. Um, this is what I'm going to do because I'm going to miss mo most of the cardstock. So imagine that you have either a piece of cardstock that you haven't cut yet, and then you cut it afterwards. Or in this case, because I already had these pre-cut, I'm just going to go with this. So now I'm going to take my same big stamp, and I'm going to soak up a whole bunch of ink. I'm starting to run out of ink, I think, so I'm going to give it a good good press and good soak. And then I'm just going to squish these all together so that they all get covered. See if I can do it all at once. Okay, so we'll do two and then we'll do the other one. So in this case, I'm going to just use this. There we go. I'm going to stamp over top of these. And then likely end up having to pick them off the stamp, yes. When you, when you end up doing this, just, yeah, try not to smudge as you go. Just try to peel them straight back. It's just the photopolymer stamps are a little... A little sticky and they're better with ink but if you catch anywhere that doesn't have ink they tend to be a bit sticky okay and then this oops that one because I hit the foam pad I didn't even my stamp didn't even hit to touch the ink so we'll just do this and then we'll go like this oh I wasn't looking do you see what I did <laughs> I made this stamp in the middle now in this case it's okay because it's to be buried but remember what I said about white spots there yeah, watch your, watch your stamp set too because I have a perfect white spot in the middle of my flower. But like I said, for what I'm doing, that'll be okay. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. And I mean, it is, it is a perfect white spot. So for those of you not familiar, this is from the Tulip Bundle. And uh, I don't know if we're supposed to tell people things or not. So how would I just say you have more time to play with this than you think right now? There you go. So I'm going to take these. So now instead of just having like a single colored tulip, I guess I could actually, here. I realize now my fingers are going to be in the way if I try to do what I was about to do. So I'm just going to use some of my handy glue dots and pop these layers together so that you can actually see what I'm trying to show you. Okay, glue dots. Oh, the answer is always glue dots. I love glue dots. They are so handy. Now, we're not 100% sure, amongst those of us who have chatted about this, what the right way to, for these to go together is. There seems to be no wrong way. No matter how you put them together, these tulips tend to look really cool. So, oops, sorry, excuse my arm. There we are. So, if you imagine that the stem was down here, or stem was in here, I mean, where it's supposed to be. I'll try to see if I can get my finger out of the way. It would have been a good idea to put the stem in before I sealed it, but there you go. So there is, I'm, I'm trying to make, I have to, I have figured out the secret. I have to get rid of the background or the camera won't focus, but see how cool that effect is. So now instead of just being a solid color tulip, which I could cut out a cardstock or cut out a white or stamp, it's sort of this patterned model. Oh, I love it. I love it. So there's one way to do it. And the other thing we can do, same idea is we'll just take the, the one with the straight line. I think it'll work. 
And I'm just going to take this label from the, well, it's from the poppy set. I can't actually remember what it's called. It's called the poppy set. How about we go with that? And because I know I'm not going to get this all in one shot, I'm going to see how much I can get so I don't ever have to overlap my stamp is what I'm going for. So in this case, and yeah, my ink is starting to get lighter and lighter as I stamp. So I think I'm starting to run out of. Now, I haven't tried because at this point I would just start over because I think it would be the safer way to go. Um, <clears throat> I haven't tried re-inking one of these. Like I think you, your best bet is just to throw this one out. It has served its purpose and um, start a new one if you, if you want more of, like if you're like, oh, this is awesome. I need to make 10 more of these things. So here we go. So now I have this cool background. And I can stamp a sentiment over top of it because the background's not overpowering. So yeah, stamp your label, stamp your background, put it on a card, uh, put it on a die cut. There's so many things you could do with this. You could just stamp these flowers like we did on the original card and um, and fussy cut it out and, and pop it up and then you'd have this really cool flower too. Okay, so, it, so that answered a couple things. One, Tracy likes to play and two, uh, it does work to use your silicone mat. Now, uh, because I have the second one, I'm just going to do this. The um, the ink did go through onto my mat. Like I don't, I've kind of made a mess of it now, but you can kind of see there is ink on there. So make sure you don't just throw the, the baby wipe away. Make sure you wipe this off. So the next time you put something down on here to glue it, you don't end up with uh, pink where you don't want it. So we are going to try... <laughs> Uh, you have, all you see is this like little tiny camera space, but I have so much stuff around me and I'm trying to be very careful because every now and again, I do start an avalanche. Okay, so this is going to be our sample. Um, our sample one. And I'm just going to test something now that I've decided this is going to be the sample one. This is actually more airtight than I thought because I don't know if you can see this on camera, but when I put the lid on this, there is some condensation. I can't make it show up. There's some condensation, oh, there you go, on the inside of the lid. So obviously it is a little a little more airtight than I thought, which is good because that means maybe it will work the way I want. Okay, so this big, beautiful tree is what we're using next. And I just want to make sure. So here's a good lesson for you because I realize now this block, which is the one you need for this tree, um, is not giving me a whole lot of, like I can go side to side a fair bit, but up and down, I can't go very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the baby wipe in the tray so I'm not hitting the block on the side of the tray. And then when I go to seal it, I'll just put the other thing on like a dome instead of this like a lid. Okay. Now, uh, I am I am definitely a winter person. I love, fall would be my second favorite season. And usually as soon as we have the first hot day in the summer, I start thinking about fall because I summer is my least favorite season. But as it turns out, I am already thinking of fall only because I love fall colors. Now I am so looking forward to spring and summer and all the things that are gonna come. Um, but I just, I love fall colors. So I decided that this tree, which I could have done in shades of green, I was gonna do in fall colors. I'm actually gonna do it this way too because that's the way the tree stamp's gonna go. So what I've done is I have my six favorite fall colors <laughs> of re -inker. And I, I quite honestly, don't didn't notice a difference starting with dark to light or light to dark so if there is a rule if there's some cardinal rule i don't know what it is so in this case i'm not doing either i'm doing this is the order they're sitting on my desk again we are very scientific here so i have six colors so i need to leave a little bit of space between them um i can't make them too close or i won't be able to fit all the colors in so i'm just gonna these ones i'm not gonna put the lids on right away because i suspect I will go back you know it, it's very I've got a thing with even numbers and odd numbers so I'm, I'm gonna start with odd numbers <laughs> I like odd numbers better and like I said this is the order they show up so that was I guess for those of you following along cherry cobbler this one is pumpkin pie and yeah it is funny because they don't I mean most of them look black when you put them down here yeah. Five of those ones. We're not even going to put the same number of everything. This one, Rich Razzleberry. I'm not sure why the cobbler. Maybe. Here, I'm going to try something. Oh, okay. So 
I figured that out, I think. Okay, so here's the thing. So this is rich raspberry. So you see how small those two drops are? Now, I gotta go somewhere. It's not gonna totally screw anything up. If I, if I hold my ring anchor this high and drop, it tends to spread out more. So let's test that hypothesis. The closer you have it to the thing, the smaller the spread. I mean, it's still gonna spread and you still can't control it. But I'm thinking, why are these cherry cobbler ones so big? But I think I was actually just holding my ring anchor really high up. Uh, we have some pear pizzazz. I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna drop really high. Well, because that's a lighter color. Nope, that's apparently not it because that one didn't spread that much. Okay, I have no idea. Maybe it's how wet the baby wipe is. Not sure. Uh, let's put one over there. Uh, a Cajun craze would be next up. And this particular stamp, oh, it is a gorgeous, oops, that one got two drops. It is a gorgeous stamp. Um, and it's meant to look like watercolor. So what's going to stamp is what you can see here that's the gray. So like it's going to be a white tree surrounded by a watercolor wash of fall colors is what it's going to look like. Um, so there is going to be white in the middle. So because I know that, um, but at the same time, I also know that I'm going to move the stamp set around a little bit when I, when I go to make it. See, obviously I have a little bit of white in the middle. It's okay to have white spots in the middle because I know the tree is going to be white in the middle anyways. Um, but I do want anywhere it does show, I do want it to be a pretty solid color because I want the branches to not all of a sudden be missing a chunk of branch. Oh, there you go. When you flip it up, that's what it gets in there. Did we already use this one? Cajun craze. Okay, so that was yellow. I have no idea what these colors are because like I said, once they hit the thing, they, uh, they all look the same color. But I'm going to go back. I didn't put a lot of pumpkin in to begin with. So we're going to... So I'm right now, because I'm living on the edge, I'm just going to go, and there's a couple spots here that are just a little too white for me. This green, yes. Um, plus I noticed that I... The green, I don't really have green distributed very well. Oh, well, that'll be fun because I just dripped green inside of whatever other color that was. Now, I do notice that this spreads a bit as I go. Um, but it is fairly filled in, so I think now we might be okay. So I'm just going to really quickly tighten all these lids so we avoid an accident. And and the funny thing is this, this has such a cool effect, and this is so ugly. <laughs> like when you look at that now and you think, oh, that cannot possibly turn out well. Um, but somehow it does. Okay. So I do have a fancy label that I cut out from the Stitch. I think they're called Stitch So Sweetly dies. Um, sadly, these are retiring and I love these labels. So there, there's, I think, six different sizes of them and they're all, they're scalloped. Plus they have the little stitched edge. Yeah, sometimes I, even using my own trick, I can't make it focus. Anyways, they're gorgeous. Now, because... I am, I like to every now and again think I'm smart. Uh, I'm actually going to do my first one just on a piece of cardstock because chances are it'll be fine and I can use it for something else. But I don't want to have to cut a second label. <laughs> so I'm going to test it somewhere else first. So here we go. I'm going down. I'm grabbing another baby wipe because I need the other one. Um, the washing in between, I'm just using baby wipes because I forgot to get my chamois wet. But, um, you don't have to wash them with a baby wipe. This part requires a baby wipe, but you don't have to wash them with a baby wipe. That just happens to be what I'm doing because I said I forgot the other part. This is a big stamp, so I'm uh, trying not to drop it. Para! Ooh, see now that's a cool effect. But I am finding that it is not showing me my tree very distinctly. So as much as, like the colors are cool, sorry. The tree is not showing very distinctly though. This is why we do it on cardstock to begin with. So I am going to, I'm going to diagnose the problem as we go. So I have another piece of cardstock here. I'm gonna try a different piece of ink, different piece of ink, a different part of where the ink is. I'm gonna give it a bit more like squishing and rubbing as I do to see if I can pick up more ink. And then, and I'm going to offset because I tend to do two offset things. Sorry, I'm out of screen, but I'm afraid to move it now. I don't want to smudge it. So I'm going to give it a little bit extra, a little bit extra weight. 
Yeah, so I got way better ink coverage on this one. It is the stamp. So not every stamp is going to work. I wasn't sure if this was going to work. I just really wanted it to because I liked the idea of a tree surrounded by fall colors. But it's not giving me the look I want. So also in this stamp set, and we'll see how this goes. This is the stamp set. And I'll just show you this while I reach for more card stuff from beside me. Um, I always have stacks of these things cut. This is why. Is uh, a butterfly and just a sprig. So I'm going to try this sprig because because I think a fall color butterfly is weird, but also because um, this is it's got like it's pretty solid. Um, it does have a little bit of a stem, so I'm curious if to see the difference there. But the leaves are bigger, so I have a feeling that maybe this one will work better. If not, we've learned something new. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. Um, Pick up a whole bunch of ink and stamp it down. And once again, see this one is smaller, so I knew I could I could shift it. But once again, I'm off the thing. So yeah, see this one's giving me a better distinct look, and I think it's just because the other one was too, the the stamp was too fine. So this one is definitely working better. Seriously, what I did? There we go. So I'm gonna wipe this off. Try again. Because now I'm now I'm committed to this piece of cardstock with this stamp. I'm going to, without a plan, see if I can make what's in my head now work. And this is still, it's fall colors. Fall colors are awesome. Look at that. And actually, the lovely Diane Inkster did a video the other day where she, and actually, if I'm not mistaken, this was one of the stamps she used. She used three different ones. Um, I think this might have been one of them. They were gorgeous cards. And she masked off an area and did the, the stamping in between. And honestly, that's what I should have done because it would have worked way better. But I'm going to see if I can do this without screwing it up too badly. But she had a bit of overlap. And when you overlap them, you get like really cool color effects. Um, I just like the way the ragged edge was. But I think I might be able to stamp all of these. And then... Um, just like kind of I can just tear the edges and probably and might be able to get the same effect because this is watercolor the edges aren't straight so that's why I'm thinking it should be not straight but you see every one of these ones I'm doing here let's go upside down this way yeah is a slightly different here after I snap this one I'll bring it I'll bring it up closer every one of these is like a slightly different color orientation but they all go nicely together uh, let's see, because I just had a thought, and <laughs> again, I always have lots of stuff beside me. This is what we're going to try next, <clears throat> but I realize now that I should not stop because I do have one very big chunk in the corner that needs to be done. So this will likely be trimmed down, so I'm not going to worry about going too close to the edge, but I got to tell you, I love the way this looks, <laughs> and with my original thought was... These are also retiring. I'm very sad. I have I had some of these left over from a different project. They're in the same colors as the ink. And these are the lovely leaves, I think they're called. And they're little stitched leaf dies, and they're gorgeous. So this is what I was thinking was these would somehow all go together. So this will likely be trimmed down in some way. But yeah, look at those cool colors. <laughs> Love it. Now, part of what I was thinking is maybe I'm not getting exactly the look I'm looking for because I used white cardstock. And so I want a fall color. And a lot of times my fall color cards, I make on crumbs, crumb cake or pear pizzazz or something. So the base of them is actually a little bit darker. So let's try that, shall we? And actually, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that sitting there for a second. I have some of my little post-it tape here, which I came out the wrong way, but that's okay. So here's a little trick for you. With your, if you're using a sticky note, you're using whatever. In this case, I'm going to try to stay on. I, I wish this was like this wide. It would be so much easier. But I'm going to rip down the middle. And I'm going to try to just, if you, if you try to, if you try to tear straight thinking you'll get a nice ragged edge, no, that time it'll work perfectly. So you kind of got to give it a little twist and turn as you go. But I am going to 
I'm going to try this. So this is similar to what I said what Diane had done. And I'm just going to get it so I get a little ragged edge. Now, I'm going to try not to stamp on there. Um, I'm also going to try to line this up. Actually, I'm going to go up a little higher because I'm never going to get it equal. So if you know you're not going to get it equal, don't even try. Make it obviously not equal. Um, here, I'll move that up a little bit. So I've taped my card. This just happens to be wide enough that it'll tape down. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do the area in the middle. This should have soaked up enough ink by now, do you think? So I'm going to pick that up. And I'm going to stamp it down. And I'm going to see if maybe it's because the the white is not what I'm looking for. Maybe I like this one. I do like that one. Yeah, it's not looking so good on the crumb cake. I'm going to see what I can, if I can make this work. But let's... Uh, it's not showing up as well as I want. But let's see if we can, let's see if we can get something to work. It's not bad. It's just not, it's not as distinct on the crumb cake. It definitely looks better on the white. But it's still cool. It's still cool colors. And this time I, believe it or not, managed to not go outside of the tape. So I did actually get what I wanted as far as my little ragged line inside. So I'll have to untape this from the table to show you what I ended up with. I'm going to put that down because I'm going to really quickly do the same thing on white. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you have to wait a little bit to see that closer up. So I can, I can reuse these pieces. There is uh, Because they're sticky on one side, I know I'm going to get the right side that and I'm gonna do that and then I think I did wipe that okay so then we're gonna try it. and this time instead of I always seem to start on one edge but really I know I'm not gonna get three full ones so I really should have just started in the middle and then I would get the full one in the middle and then two partial ones on either side and in this case I'm going to purposely overlap a bit Oh, I think I might have went too high. Oh, just by the skin of my teeth did I not screw that up. I just about went past the tape, which I don't want to do. Okay. So this time I'm going to pay more attention, so I'm going to make sure I don't do that. Ta-da! Okay, now... Oh, I just set that back down in there. I didn't push on it, so we should be okay. But it is it is a really, like I said, it is a really hard habit to break. Not to tap, 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 tap. Or to just like, oh, I stamped. I'm going to stamp again. Um, oh, look at how good this looks. If I did say so myself. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. So this would be so good in so many different colors. But, okay, so here's the thing. This is the white one. This is the crumb cake one. Obviously, you can tell that. So the crumb cake one still looks good. It's just not as dark. It's not as distinct as the other one. I don't actually know. Now that I see them like this, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of leaning crumb cake. Um, and it all depends how you like finish it and embellish it and stuff like that. So those are very cool. But like I said, I mean, I got six different colors in there, I think. Six different fall colors. Um, so it did not work with my tree. So this... It's always good, like I said, the trial and error, because this is not bad, and I will figure out something to do with it. I'm just not sure what yet. Um, but it, yeah, the tree is, I know it's a tree, but if I didn't know it was a tree and I looked at this, would, would, I, would I just think, hey, cool colors, and not actually even see the tree? Um, and, and that might be what I end up doing. Like, maybe I'll just turn it sideways like this. Actually, you know what's funny? When I turn it sideways like this, I see fall trees and the reflection in the water. So maybe I'll do that. And maybe I will play on that and just embellish it as such to make it look like that's what that is. Or maybe I'll just use the one that's got cool colors down the middle and just put something on it. And this is just a cool background, right? All is not lost. There's, it's never a loss when you're making cards. You can always make it work for something. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way so I don't stamp on it. Now, because I'm, I'm about to put this in my thing to, to do a test on it. <clears throat> I am trying to, this was what I was originally going to put the, the piece on. I might still, or I might put the white one on. Um, but because I was originally going to put it on green, I needed a piece of cardstock 
to go in the middle of my um, old olive card base. So I'm going to stamp that before I forget because one of those is going to end up in a card. <laughs> um, and I'm going to stamp an envelope. Oops, I just about did it again. I'm going to stamp an envelope because that card's going to need an envelope. And actually, you know what I'm going to do this time? Because I still have my tape here. This is one of the effects I like. This is this is a little too big, I think, for the front of the envelope. I, I often wonder if postal workers get annoyed, depending how big you make the stamp on the front. But, um, but it is a cool look to stamp the flap. So we'll just... I love these colors. Like I said, fall colors. I just love fall colors. I should have probably turned my stamp at some point, but now that I'm almost at the end, I feel like it'll look funny if I turn my stamp. So I'm not going to. There we go. So I'll untape this. Ta-da! Okay, probably use that enough to get my my work out of it. But look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Ta-da! And so when you open it and you look and you say, oh, nice, it's from Tracy and it's sent to my friend. But then when you turn it over, as you naturally will to open it, surprise, look at how gorgeous that is. And like I said, you look at this and you think, ooh, and then you look at this and you think, nice. <laughs> they just don't go together. Alrighty. So I am going to tuck this in. <clears throat> I believe I have rambled enough and given you enough ideas and tried enough things for you. <laughs> that should give you the idea of how to do this. I would love it if you guys would go and play and make some creations and then post pictures and show me what they are. Like I said, I've sealed this up now and I'm going to, um, I'll wait. Tomorrow may not be long enough. I'm going to wait till Saturday. I'm going to leave it out so I can see it. I'm going to wait till Saturday and then I'm going to try to stamp on it, like just as it is. And then depending on whether it's dry or not, or maybe despite the fact it's dry or not, I'm going to spritz it with maybe half with water and half with alcohol just to see if what that does to it really maybe it makes it better maybe 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 we'll learn something new and we'll find out that hey we should have done that right from the beginning one never knows but this will be our experiment for the weekend and i will finish off the rest of the cards and i will make a short little video then to post all of these things so as i said in the meantime <laughs> i would love it if you would take something that we learned today and make a project with it Look at all these things I have stamped that I have to now finish up and make into something. Um, oh, I know. It's such a torturous job. Um, I love my job. I love doing this kind of stuff. And I, and as you notice, I love to play. So <laughs> um, I will try all sorts of things. But look at all these things we have. Here, I, just, and I got pink. I need to get at least one thing of the other color up there for us. So ooh, this one, this one, this one is, is definitely... Um, got one of the most striking effects um, and I, I am going to uh, I can tell you right now I'm going to go back to the leaves and I'm going to make a little ink pad with some green in it um, of green blue yeah I don't know but and I'm going to add some green leaves to it but this is going to be I think one of my favorites and again just start playing you never know what you might come up with there we go ladies and gentlemen the baby wipe technique uh, thank you all for joining me and hanging in there. Oh my goodness, I went for an entire hour. See, once I get talking and I enjoy this and I start playing, there is no end. Um, thanks for hanging in there with me. Uh, like I said, check back on Saturday and see what all of this became and see how our science experiment with the leftovers goes. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening and uh, we'll talk to you in a couple days.